All right, get ready for this one, because today's deep dive takes us into a literary conspiracy theory for the ages. The question of whether Shakespeare actually wrote Shakespeare. And we're not just talking about the usual suspects, right? You've brought in a YouTube video that goes deep on Ben Jonson, a contemporary of Shakespeare. And this video claims Jonson was basically holding on to a huge e-secret about the bard's true identity. You got it. This isn't just some random internet theory. This video claims there's evidence hidden within Ben Jonson's own writings, like secret messages only he knew how to leave. Which is a pretty intriguing idea, right? Because if Jonson and Shakespeare were as close as some historians believe, you'd think Jonson would be shouting Shakespeare's name from the rooftops. But this video points out that he's strangely silent. See, that's what caught my eye. It's one thing to have those theories about, say, Edward de Vere hiding his identity. But if Jonson is in on it too, well... That just adds a whole other layer of intrigue. It definitely makes you wonder. To understand this theory, though, we need to back up a bit. For those who might not remember from English class, remind us who Ben Jonson was and why anyone should care about his connection to Shakespeare. Okay, great point. It's easy to get lost in the conspiracy before we even lay the groundwork. So, Ben Jonson, Elizabethan England. Hit me with the highlights. Well, imagine the biggest rock star you can think of today, but instead of music, it's plays and poetry. That was Ben Jonson in Shakespeare's time. He was a respected playwright, a sharp-witted poet, even a bit of a literary critic, basically. A big deal in the theater world. Right. He wrote plays like Vopone and The Alchemist. Okay, now it's all coming back to me. They even performed together in a few plays, right? Exactly. They were contemporaries, rivals even, but most scholars believe they respected each other's work immensely. So when this video claims Johnson's silence on Shakespeare is deliberate, it really makes you stop and think. <laughs> what did Johnson know that he wasn't saying? Okay, let's get into the heart of this theory. The video focuses on a couple of really specific aspects of Johnson's work that it claims are coded messages about Shakespeare's real identity. You're talking about the epigrams and the eulogy in the first folio, right? Bingo. First, these epigrams, what exactly are they? It's been a while since I've had to pull out the old literary dictionary. Think of epigrams as short, witty poems. Johnson was known for writing a lot of them, and the video claims a particular one, Epigram 77, is key to this whole thing. Okay, I see it in the video. It says something like, I promise to tell you about a man of so good a fame that I won't say his name. And that's what the video argues is a code. They say it's a clear hint about Johnson's intention to protect Shakespeare's real identity. They even point to other poems that use similar wordplay and double meanings, suggesting that Johnson was hiding the true author in plain sight. It's pretty clever, if you ask me, especially since they were writing at a time when their work was scrutinized by the Crown. I mean, they were risking their own reputations, but this video says they were ready to go to great lengths to protect the true Shakespeare. But it gets even more interesting when we look at the first folio, that first collection of Shakespeare's plays published after his death. Right. I remember reading that it was edited by Johnson. And some say he even wrote the preface. Exactly. And this is where it gets really interesting. The video argues that Johnson's eulogy for Shakespeare in the first folio is full of subtle clues about his real identity. Ooh, tell me more. What's the specific line they're focused on? Well, the video points to the line, he was not of an age, but for all time. And then it says a monument without a grave and claims that this is a coded message. They argue that Johnson's using this line to indicate that the real Shakespeare is still alive. Whoa, hold on a second. I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around this. You're saying Johnson is suggesting Shakespeare faked his own death? Mm -hmm. Is there even a single piece of evidence for this? That's where things get even wilder. The video's theory is that the real Shakespeare was none other than Christopher Marlowe. Okay, I know that name. Wasn't he, like, a writer too? But didn't he die in some kind of brawl? That's the thing. Marlowe's death was shrouded in mystery. He was stabbed in a tavern fight, but there's no definitive evidence of who killed him. That's right. I remember reading theories about it in my English class. I even heard one that said he faked his own death, maybe to avoid trouble. Precisely. The video claims Marlowe faked his death and then continued writing under the name Shakespeare. And Johnson was in on it. Wait, so Marlowe is the real Shakespeare? But how does that even work? I mean, if he's the real Shakespeare, why are all the plays attributed to William Shakespeare? That's what this whole theory is trying to explain. The video says it was part of a plan to protect Marlowe's identity and escape potential repercussions. Well, I guess if you're going to fake your death, you might as well fake your whole identity. But wouldn't that be incredibly risky? That's the point. It's a huge e-gamble. 
But we'll discuss the evidence for and against it in the next part. This is getting crazier and crazier. I'm starting to think the real Shakespeare might be hiding in plain sight right under our noses. I'm with you. And we're not even done yet. This video digs even deeper. We need to talk about more clues in Johnson's work. Oh, yeah. What else have they found? Okay, we've got these secret identities, coded messages, even a faked death. This whole thing feels like something out of a Dan Brown novel. But is there a actual proof that this theory is something more than just a really interesting idea? That's the big question, isn't it? This video is packed with interesting details and interpretations, but it's important to remember that it's based on circumstantial evidence. For example, it mentions similarities in writing style between Marlowe and Shakespeare, but those could be influenced by many things. The time period, the popular trends in literature, even the simple fact that these were both brilliant playwrights working with the same language. Right. It's not like they're comparing, say, a Shakespearean sonnet to a modern-day poem. These were both writers operating in a similar context. And it seems like a lot of the proof boils down to finding double meanings and hidden messages in Johnson's work, which is really subjective. And that's where the critical thinking comes in. You have to ask yourself, are these coded messages truly intentional or are they just being read into the work? Is this a conspiracy or is it just a group of brilliant writers who are deeply connected? See, that's what I was thinking. It seems like a lot of these clues could just be coincidences or even, dare I say, over-interpretations. Yeah. But it's not like the video doesn't present some compelling evidence. It's almost as if it's trying to make you believe it. And that's a pretty powerful tool for any conspiracy theory. It's fascinating, isn't it? It's really a battle of interpretations, a constant push and pull between looking for meaning and accepting the possibility of coincidence. I'm reminded of that old saying, to see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wildflower. Except here, it's like the video's asking us to see a whole conspiracy in a single line of a poem. It's certainly a thought-provoking approach. And even if you don't believe the claims about a hidden Shakespeare, the video does raise some really interesting questions about the relationship between Johnson and Shakespeare and the nature of authorship itself. Absolutely. It's a reminder that even the most familiar stories can have hidden layers, and the truth is often more complicated than we first assume. And that's what I love about these deep dives. They push us to look beyond the surface, to question our assumptions, and to explore the world of knowledge with an open mind. I can't help but wonder, though, if this whole conspiracy is really just a smokescreen, a way to distract us from the real question, which is, what exactly did Ben Johnson know about Shakespeare's life and work? And that's a question worth pondering, isn't it? Maybe the real secret isn't about who is Shakespeare, but about what Johnson was willing to keep quiet about. You know what? I think this deep dive has given me more questions than answers. I think I need to reread some of Johnson's work with fresh eyes. See if I can find any other hit or clues myself. I'm with you. Maybe we'll find something that everyone else has missed. After all, the mystery of Shakespeare's identity continues to intrigue us centuries later, and I'm betting it'll keep us guessing for a long time to come.